Hi, my name is Peach. Let me not waste your time. Today, I'll be going over everything I know about DaVinci Resolve 17's Anim Curves. So what are Anim Curves? Anim Curves is a modifier that allows you to customly animate specific controls in Fusion in an easily reusable way. Let me show you. Here, I have the same transition made with Anim Curves and regular keyframes. I wanted to extend this clip with the keyframe values. You can see that the transition stays the same and is unchanged. But with Anim Curve transition, if I extend the adjustment clip, then the keyframe placement will follow the length of the adjustment clip. Depending on certain situations, you may want to use one or the other. But for now, let's take a look at the way we can use anim curves. A common way that I use anim curves in my edits is with the blur that I use, which I also made a tutorial on recently if you'd like to go check it out. First, I'm going to grab an adjustment clip and put it over the time where I want the blur to last, and then we're going to go into Fusion. In my blur tutorial, I use the Reactor node defocus gamma, but to not confuse you, I will show you how to use the regular blur the node. So we're going to hit shift space and type in blur and add it to our node tree. In order to activate the modifier, what we're going to do is go to the setting that we want to be adjusted. In this case, it'll be the lower control. We're going to right click it, go to modify with, and then choose anim curves. Once that is done and the setting is keyframed then you can go to the modifiers page at the top here it will show you all the settings that you can adjust with anim curves in the first tab you have the curve shape which houses the source and the type of curve in the source you can choose between transition duration and custom time if you choose duration the spline that is made with the anim curve will last the whole adjustment clip or whatever fusion composition you are in if you choose transition it will also do the same thing but if you were to shorten the adjustment clip from the left side and the motion will start within the middle of the curve instead of the values that you set down here so i would try to avoid using that despite what previous tutorials have told you lastly is a custom source where you can keyframe where you want to start and the end of the curve by using the value zero representing the start of the curve and one representing the end of the curve for what we are doing we're going to choose duration to modify the curve so what curves am i referring to i'm talking about these curves right here in the second drop down menu here you can pick a linear spline which is just a straight line from one value to another easing which gives you pre-made curves that the program gives you my favorite is the elastic out and custom curve which allows you to modify the spline yourself what we're going to focus on today we are going to use the custom curve now once you click that let's skip down to the scaling column here you have the scale and the offset settings that you can adjust the offset setting controls the start of the value of your curve so if we set it to zero and look at the first frame we'll see the blur is zero now if we mess with the scale setting this controls the value of how the offset number moves so if we put a value of two for scale while having the offset value at zero then the curve will go from a zero blur to a two blur you can check this by going back to the tools page and looking at the values but if we change the offset value to one the ending value will be a three blur so let's check offset is at one the scale is at two so the value of the keyframe will be three that is how the scaling values work now since we are using custom curve we can change the spline to adjust these values during the clip we can add a keyframe if we like we can make very sharp curves and we can even control if the value even scales at all if i put the last keyframe down at the bottom of the graph the value of the blur will not increase you can see when i mess with the keyframe that these in and out values down here will change this is a value controls the in value controls what part of the timeline we are on so if the value is one then we know that is the last keyframe of the spline if the value is zero then we know we're at the start of the spline the out value controls how intense you are allowing the scale to move so at zero it will not move at all and at one it will move to its maximum value that it is set at at 0.5 it will go halfway of what the scale value adjustment is the last part of the anim curves is the timing controls and i think it will be better shown while using anim curves on a transform node so i'll make that right now just to show you all right here i have the transform node and i put anim curves on the y value put the source as duration and the curve as elastic curve so the animation will make a jiggling kind of movement like this in order to see these time adjustments i'm going to open up the spline graph and i'm going to select the position y check mark box just above the lookup box and if we hit the zoom to fit we can actually see the curve that we selected and as you can see since we chose elastic it's in the shape of a wave with time scale we can increase or decrease the length of the curve to make the movement sharper or softer. The lower the number, the softer the movement, and the further the spline graph will expand. Now if we reset that and adjust the time offset, we are adjusting the time when the curve will start to activate. The lower the number, the further along the curve we will see it, and the larger the number, the bigger the delay the curve will have. So everything I just explained are the most important controls that you need to understand anim curves. There are these boxes named mirror and invert, which mess with the direction of the graph, and then there's these clip high and low boxes, which I'm not sure they do, so I'm not going to explain it. But if we go back to the blur node, the way I would use anim curves to adjust this value is by using the custom curve on duration with my ideal values. So starting from somewhere like 5 and going down to 0 would be ideal. So in order to do that, I'm going to put 5 for the offset and negative 5 for the scale. That will give you a graph that is stuck to each end of the adjustment clip and that I can adjust the length in the edit page so I can have it last longer or shorter or however I want. Now that you know how to use anim curves, you can implement it in your presets that you've made. For example, I use anim curves for the shake, the exposure, and the blur that I have over here. What I used to do this is just a brightness and contrast node with the anim curves on the gain control and I have it adjusted with a custom curve and then the source is going to be duration. 
but yeah that's my explanation of atom curves if you enjoyed this video i would appreciate it if you give it a like so other people who would like to learn about this or don't even know they want to learn about this can see it if any more questions or additions to my explanation please leave them down below in the comment section if you'd like to join the resolve amy community discord there's a link in the description as well as my own server if you'd like to join and with that subscribe and have a good day